be over two days. One for more book type and then one for AP type. Are you ready? Cool. This is the notes. Uh, I might get to do about two thirds of these notes and finish the notes tomorrow. There's just a lot here going on. Okay. Way back in sets 40, 40? Something like that. Uh, you estimated area under the curve using left hand rectangle approximation method, left LRAM, right hand rectangle approximation method, RAM. Uh, you use midpoint method. Uh, it's been a while since we used midpoint. That's a good one. Um, but none of those rectangle methods are as good as trapezoid. Now, if you think about it for just a second, it's logical why trapezoid would be better to estimate the area under the curve. Unless the function stays at the same level over a whole interval, then rectangles are going to not follow the curve very well, whereas a trapezoid, because the y's can change, will follow the curve a little better. And you'll find trapezoids are a better estimator than rectangles. Are you with me? All right, so those of you who are going to continue on with math, you'll actually find that the best approximation method is a mixture, a blend of trapezoids with midpoint. It's called Simpson's rule, and you can get error down quite a bit that way. But uh, if we have time, we'll maybe take a half day on Simpson's rule, but I can't promise. All right, so anywho, check this out. Trapezoids are used to approximate area under a curve. First, why approximate at all? Well, not everything can be integrated. If I try to find the antiderivative of that, if I try to find what function has that as a derivative, you could try all day and you will never find it. There is no function that has that as a derivative. Not everything can be integrated. And in a case like that, where something can't be integrated, the fundamental theorem then of integrating and then plugging in the value kind of falls and fails to work because you can't do the antiderivative at all to start with. The best way to do this then is to use trapezoids to estimate the area under the curve. And first and foremost, you can imagine how on the AP test they will be grading for that, knowing it's an approximation, not the exact. And they will take off if you say it equals when it's not. All right? Now, four trapezoids of equal subdivisions. Um, picture definitely will not be used in most cases, but for the first time through, uh, let's go for it. I have zero idea what this curve looks like. I imagine it rocks between negative one and one, but I'm I'm just gonna do this. It does it does not have to the picture does not have to be good to get the accurate shape. All right. It's just kind of getting you started conceptually. Now, if you were to divide this four times, then you're talking a total region of 12 minus 0 divided into 4 chunks, the delta x, or the subdivision width, is 3, right? Are you with me? Okay. So I'm going to go from 0 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 9, 9 to 12. So far, it's just like rectangles. The only difference now is that instead of rectangles, I'm going to use trapezoids between each point. And again, this curve is not accurate, it's just something a little bit. You with me so far? All right. <clears throat> now, remember the area of a trapezoid formula is base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 2. But notice where normally in pre-algebra we were used to the bases all being horizontal. In this case, and in these, all these cases, the bases, which are the parallel sides, the bases are in vertical here, not horizontal. So here's base one, here's base two of the first trapezoid. Don't think the base is what's on bottom or the x axis. That's not okay. The bases are the parallels running vertical. You follow? Um, the next trapezoid will have its own base one and base two, and then another base one and base two, and another base one and base two until we're done. We'll do a little bit of organizing, and there's a 
a little bit of combining like terms to be had here. Um, let's go with the, I guess I should have put this off to the side because that's just side notes here. Come on back. All right. So trapezoid one is base one plus base two. Now, base one is the function at zero. Base two is the function at three. The height, the height, which is the distance between the bases, is delta x, so the height is three. All that divided by two, because that's the trapezoid one. Divided by two, base one plus base two times height divided by two. The next trapezoid, what are base one and base two? F at 3 plus F at 6. What's the height or the distance between the bases? 3 divided by 2. Okay. Third trapezoid. Base 1 plus base 2. F at 6 plus F at 9 times 3 divided by 2. And the last trapezoid, F at 9 plus f at 12 times 3 divided by 2, right? Now there is a bit of a shortcut here to avoid having to do so much work. Think now graded common factors. They all have that same base of 3, or height of 3, excuse me, and the divided by 2. So you can factor out the 3 and the 2. Now, once I do that, the Brackets around those aren't really necessary anymore because the distributed 3 is not an issue anymore. So I'm going to drop the brackets. I'm looking at f at 0 plus f at 3 for the first trapezoid. The next trapezoid is f at 3 plus f at 6 for the second trapezoid. Third trapezoid is f at 6 and f at 9 for the bases. And the last trapezoid is f at 9 and f at 12. You see? The shortcut then that you'll be able to use in these cases is a little bit of combining terms. You can see that there are two f at 3s. Why was that? Looking back at what happened. Why are there two f at 3s? There's f at 3 here. Why are there two of them in my calculation? Yeah, it's, it's part of, it's base 2 for the first trapezoid and base 1 for the second trapezoid. Right? Likewise, this guy here, f at 6, is part of a second trapezoid and part of trapezoid 3. So there are two f at 6s and two f at 9s. But only a single f at 12. Why only one f at 0 and one f at 12? Yeah, the far endpoints are only part of one trapezoid, not two. Are you with me? That's the shortcut. This is the typical starting point. When there are equal subdivisions, you jump straight to that. All that development was for the purpose of notes so you can see where it's coming from. But uh, in the future, you'll get to it. You follow? All right. At that point, then, um, in this case, I would probably in terms of typing this in, rather than type in 2 sine of e to the 0, f or 2 times 2 sine e to the 3rd, so on, I would probably then type in, for calculator purposes, I would let f of 1 equal 2 sine of e to the x, and then in my scratch pad I would actually write it as I see it, calling up the function rather than re-typing 2 sine e to the x every time at every value. You with me? All right. <coughs> that is the deal then. Let's try a couple here and there. So, um, would you try and estimate this? You may use your calculator using, uh, do you, should you use your calculator? I think so. All right, you can use your calculator. Uh, using three equal subdivisions. Give it a go. Picture's optional. 
all the formula stuff, development is optional. You could definitely go straight to the factored out height and divide it by two, height is the delta x. So I was saying. One over six was it next? Or? You get 1,471 over 36. Nope. I, you should not have got that because that's wrong. Never mind. Burn it. Did you get 529 over 1,440? Yes. All righty then. Uh, you can imagine, that's a pretty small number. If I graph this well, you can see why. This is decaying pretty rapidly. You're dividing one by this. So this is a really small y value region here. That's why your area is so small, because the y's are really small. All right, you with me? Uh, try the multiple choice there, please. You don't have to show work, just choose.
you feeling? P or E? It is E. It's got the twos that you would expect for the inner values, right? Um, let's, in the interest of time, have you try one more. Go to the extra practice, please, and do 1A. 1A. What's your delta x? 2. 8 minus 0 divided into 4 chunks is 2 each chunk, right? So your estimate of the integral should be something like the height over 2, which is 2 over 2. Half of 0 plus 2 half of 2s plus 2 half of 4s plus 2 half of 6s plus an f of 8. Right? So what'd you get for an answer? Anybody? 176. 176, I agree. Okay? All right. Now the question is, um, anytime you have an estimation method, oops, uh, oops, different idea here. I'm going to jump this, jump this part of the notes and go to the back, please. Okay. Now, recall when we used rectangles, uh, we had an idea of if it was left hand or right hand rectangle was over or underestimated. What was it all about? Increasing or decreasing. When using a Riemann sum, you could tell if an estimate is over or under the true value based on the combination of left hand versus right hand and increasing versus decreasing. For example, uh, this is an underestimate because we used left hand rectangles on a what? What would left hand rectangles underestimate? Increasing or decreasing? If I use left hand, then the lower side would be on the left, and so on. Left hand would underestimate an increasing function. Okay? Now, notice it does not matter one whit if it's increasing concave up or increasing concave down. Does it matter? The left hand rectangles still want to underestimate either way because the left-hand side is less than the right-hand side if it's increasing. It's about increasing or decreasing, not about concavity. Understood? Don't lose that because now it's about to be about concavity for trapezoids. If you look at this guy here, and if I call that, I think you'll agree that's increasing concave up. Now let's Think about if we use trapezoids to do area under the curve. Let's do two trapezoids. Two trapezoids would be here and 
there. Do trapezoids over or underestimate? Over, okay. Trapezoids over. Now let's talk increasing concave down. Increasing concave down in two regions. Increasing concave down, do trapezoids over or underestimate? Under. under. Trapezoids under. Now let's talk the other two possibilities. Decreasing concave up do two trapezoids. One, two. Do trapezoids over or underestimate? Trapezoids are over. Now do decreasing concave down. Do trapezoids over or underestimate? Under. All right. So you can see then that there is definitely a connection between trapezoids and concavity, not increasing or decreasing. This one was increasing both times, but the trapezoid outcome was totally different. It's tied to the concavity. So the note you have to get is that trapezoids overestimate if F is concave what? Trapezoids are overestimated if the curve is concave up, which would be because F double is positive in your justification. And trapezoids underestimate if F is concave down, which would be because F double is negative. All about concavity for trapezoids, increasing, decreasing for F. You with me? All right. If then I already did this, let's we just did x squared kind of already, yeah. Actually, yeah, well, I zero to four different bounds. All right. So if you were to bound this, let's go through this quickly and estimate this. What's the delta f? One. one. Okay. So we factor out the delta x of one divided by two because that's the trapezoid part of the formula. F at, assuming this is F of X, then F at 0 plus 2F at plus 2F at 2 plus 2F at 3 plus a single F at 4. Counting in here, you'll notice that although you have four trapezoids, you have five values. That's to be expected because you're starting with the left endpoint. And so don't think, oh, I must have done something wrong. I have four trapezoids, but I got five values in here. That's exactly right. You should have one. You with me? All right. So one half is zero plus two times one squared plus two times two squared, which is four, plus two times three squared, which is nine, plus single four squared, which is 16. Our estimate is one half of, what do we got there? Two plus... 8 plus 18 plus 16. What's our estimate, y'all? 10, 28. 44 divided by 2. I'm getting 22. All right. Now the second part. Is this an over or underestimate? With justification. If f is x squared, then f prime is 2x, and therefore f double is 2. Now that implies that F double is concave up or F is concave up? Yeah. yeah. All right. So F double is greater than zero, so F is concave up. Therefore, trapezoids will, if it's concave up, then trapezoids will over or underestimate. Over. Or overestimate. A little picture goes a long way, <laughs> just to remind you. Okay? We could actually verify that by integrating and see that our estimate of 22 is coming in too high. Um, I think that's what the homework has to do. That should be uh, good for today. I'll do the rest of the notes tomorrow. All right.
just take questions on either and just do them in the order you ask them. What do you think? Okay, so 94 problem set one. Yes. All right. 94 problem set four. Let me know if you also have questions on the extra practice. 94 problem set one, problem set four. Seven. 94, seven. 94, eight. If you have lots of issues on the extra practice, ask those or come in. 2418? Yes? Extra practice 16? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go. Anybody else have some Friday night to check for questions? Yes, I use the revolution around these different kinds of things. Okay. 94 1. Okay, so I think you'll agree this is a parabola with zeros and zero and two, and it's below the axis, which right away makes me worry. I need to make sure I don't get negatives in here. All right, so if it's around y equal three, is y equal three a vertical line or a horizontal line? So horizontal line, y equal three is horizontal. And so if the region is one, two, three units from the mirror on this side, then it'll be one, two, three units from the mirror on this side. Okay? All right. Now, the thought process goes this way. Now choose the variable. What kind of slice do you want to use? X or Y? Y. God, no. Y is terrible. Y is the worst. If you use Y, then you've got to break the problem into two totally different curves. Where is this positive? Where is that negative? No. Y, boo. Y, bad choice. Bad Y. Boo. On you. Not Y. Use X. Okay, if you use X, then you use washers. Notice I chose X, then I got a washer. I need to choose a washer, then get a uh. It's the variable choose first. Okay, so it's using X. Volume is pi big R squared minus little r squared dx. Big R. Here's big R. Notice I'm going vertically, so I will use upper minus lower. Upper is 3. Lower is a point on the curve. So the question is, do I use y or the curve equation? Well, i, I got to use the curve equation because I'm putting it all in terms of x. I can't use y. So upper is 3 minus the lower of x squared minus 2x in parentheses. Little r. Here's little r. Upper is 3, lower is 0. 
Limits of integration, 0, 2, 2. Okay, put that in your calculator and get a volume of that shot. Okay, E. If I take this region and revolve it around x equals 3, which is a vertical line, then the distance between the mirror and the region is one unit this way, so like that. Again, deciding what variable, we're using x, period. If I use x, then my slice looks this way. That slice looks like that, which is a cylindrical shell. Volume then is 2 pi times the radius times the height. Here's the radius. It's a horizontal distance. The right edge seems to be 3. The left edge seems to be some point here. Now, shall I call it x or shall I call it the curve? x, 3 minus x. The height, the height is here. Notice I'm going vertically, upper minus lower. What's upper? Zero. What's lower? The curve. In other words, I need to negate the curve so I get positive heights. dx again from zero to two. And that same shot. Okay? These are hard. Persevere. Learn from your mistakes and you'll gradually get better. But it does take a while. Um, 94.4, is that still a question? All right. Four four is not replaced. Ball is twenty meters above the ground is moving upward at twenty meters per second. So at time equals zero, the height or the y if you like is twenty meters. And uh, moving upward the velocity at time zero is positive twenty meters. Per second, yeah? Find the height, velocity, and acceleration function for the movement. So, let's go here. What's the acceleration function given that it's motion due to gravity? I think it's motion due to gravity, yeah? Okay, it's meters, so acceleration is negative 9.8, yeah? Velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration which is the antiderivative of negative 9.8. So negative 9.8t plus a constant. If I use the fact that velocity is 20 at time 0, then the velocity equation should be negative 9.8t plus 20. Okay? Now the height function. Height is the antiderivative of velocity, which is the antiderivative of negative 9.8t plus 20 with respect to time. That's negative 4.9t squared plus 20t plus a new constant. The height is 20 at time 0. It implies the height is negative 4.9t squared plus 20t plus 20. There's my equations for acceleration, velocity, and height. That's part A. Okay? B, at time 2 then, acceleration at time 2. Constant. B should be easy now, and C hits the ground means height is zero. You can solve that a lot of different ways. Solves quadratic formula. Calculator. Solves quadratic equation. Okay. Okay, 94.7. <laughs> 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 
So here's x equal negative one. It's a vertical line. If you use x or y. Good question. If you use x, it's a shell. minus negative one. So the radius is x plus one. The height is vertical. It's upper minus lower. The upper point could either be y or the curve, but I want it to be an exponent, so I'm going to go the curve. Tangent of x minus zero. Okay. 94.8, anybody? equal 4. Okay, if I use x as a variable, am I going to get a dishwasher or a shell? A shell. So volume is 2 pi. What's the radius? What's the height? Well, the radius is a horizontal distance, so right minus left. The right is definitely 4. The left could either be the curve or x. But because it's x, it's going to be x. So 4 minus x. The height is upper minus lower. The upper could be some varying point y or the curve itself. It's going to have to be the curve. e to the x minus 0. From 2 to 3. Okay. Make sure I get both today. Struggling, come in, don't ignore it. It won't fix itself. 